Don't panic, I haven't lost track of the order of things, but I'm going to say a few words uh, to you before reading the gospel this morning. Have you ever had someone who believed in you? And I mean really believed. Someone who thought you could win the race or ace the test, get the job. Someone who thought you could reach the stars or heal an owie with a kiss. There is a a quirky cult movie called Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. I would ask you to raise your hand if you've seen it, but a few people here have. I can't see the rest of you. It's about two lifelong best friends, misfits that are barely getting by, not having made much of their lives when they get an invitation to their high school reunion. There are a lot of really cringy moments, but, spoiler alert, The aha moment comes when Romy and Michelle find out that all the while that they thought they were the losers, the outcasts, the left behinds, there were classmates who looked up to them. And I think the object lesson of the movie is supposed to be that we should always be aware that someone might be looking up to us. But I think the reassuring message is, the more reassuring message, is that even when they didn't believe in themselves, Somebody else believed in them, and that changed everything. And I know this sounds a little bit like a Hallmark movie, but I can promise you that there is a much bigger theological and existential truth at stake. And I invite you to listen to what the psalmist said, as Elsa so beautifully read this morning. The psalmist sings of God who finally wrought the stars and the moon from nothing. The psalmist sings of God who created us to do nothing less than the work of God on earth, to steward the whole of creation, the sheep and oxen and beasts of the field and the birds of the air. And here I have to tell you about our robin. We have two baskets of Dauphine violets hanging on our front porch, and on Memorial Day weekend, we watched a robin build her nest, of course in the basket closest to the front door, and there she remains, patiently warming the life beneath her. And so we put up a sign that reads, Please tread softly, Mama Robin and nest nearby, mail and deliveries only, everybody else please use the back door. And so one afternoon from our living room, I watched as the mail carrier, a white man, came up to our steps, read the sign, tiptoed to the mailbox, and silently delivered the mail. And about an hour later, the FedEx driver, a black man, came running up the sidewalk, stopped short, read the sign, and walked all the way to the back door to deliver our package. Black and white, you have given them dominion over the birds of the air. God has entrusted all life into our hands, from the vast to the vulnerable, from our own creation when we were made to tend and till the earth, and when we were given the gift of naming all things great and small, God has entrusted us. God entrusted us. And so with that in mind, we turn to the gospel reading this morning, which comes from the gospel of Matthew. And you might remember that on Easter Sunday, when the women found the tomb empty, they hurried to tell the disciples and ran smack into Jesus himself. And Jesus said to the women, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Sixty words. All that they have been through, and the resurrected Jesus leaves them with sixty words. 
You can imagine their questions, their confusion, their wonder, their hope, their fear, and yes, even their doubt. And Jesus gives them just 60 words. But remember, from our creation, God created us, trusted us. So before Jesus leaves them for the last time, he entrusts them with the power to be Jesus' body, moving and healing and loving them on, loving on earth. On some Sundays, we might preach this about how, the God, how God has empowered you, so go therefore and be awesome. But for this morning, I wonder if you can hear instead about the one who made us, who entrusted us, and who believes in us. Because we have a lot of work to do. First, the pandemic. The virus is still out there. You may be working from home or unemployed, isolated or afraid, and nobody knows what the new school year will bring. We at Trinity are blessed to have a drive-in, so we can at least for this summer defer the difficult conversations about how to safely re-enter our building, and we can continue to do the hard, holy work of being church as we are apart. And I want to take a moment to tell you, you're doing a really good job, by the way, of being the church, worshiping together, organizing, connecting, and loving your neighbors. And now, in the midst of pandemic, thrust directly in our path is the cold, hard reality of institutionalized systemic racism. It's been there for centuries, but something happened in the murder of George Floyd and the aftermath that has broken hearts open in new ways. And it's going to be a tough election year. Pandemic, protests, and climate realities all being politicized by leaders on both sides, weaponized nearly. And we hear you. We hear you asking what you can do. We hear you making uncertain confessions, repenting of your role in the sin of racism, even as you who would never harm another are awakening to the dangerous consequences of silence. We hear you worry for the future and struggle to remain hopeful. We hear your grief, your fatigue, your anxiety, and we struggle with our own. And so as Jesus' body, we gather to breathe to pray, to worship, and to remember who we are and to remind one another that there is one who believes in us all. God never stopped believing in us. Sure, there were some rough times at first, getting cast from the garden and that whole issue of the flood, but then God said, enough. I will never again destroy the earth with a flood. Sin or no sin, we are in this together for the long haul. I am God with you. I love you, and you are mine in all circumstances. From the psalmist to Jesus on the mountainside, God reminds us. It's easy to misinterpret, I think, the Matthew path passage with, with its assertive, go therefore and baptize mandate. But Jesus is not giving us the identity of proselytizers. Jesus is calling us to be inviters. Jesus is calling us to invite people, other human beings made by God who believes in us all, and invite them into the kingdom-building, dream-weaving work of God. The fact that this meeting with Jesus took place in Galilee, the fact that Jesus says go and make disciples of all nations means that everyone everywhere is invited into the kingdom building, dream weaving work of God. And so when your back aches and your tears fall and you tremble with fear and you're overwhelmed by the suffering of our siblings, take time. Take time to be the human being God created you to be. Take time to feel your feelings. Take time to breathe and to rest. And do not despair. God believes in our capacity to walk alongside one another, to work with and for one another. God has placed the healing power of Jesus 
the life-giving word of God, the bread of life into our hands because God believes in us. God, the creator of the universe, believes in us because God made us and we are God's. We can do this. We can do this by the power of Jesus Christ breathed into us. God's work, our hands. God's word, our voices. Amen.